I'm Edward Crawford and I'm a consultant orthopaedic surgeon specialising in hip and knee surgery uh, in Northampton. Patients have a good idea really related to the amount of pain they're getting and the restrictions they've got on their physical activity and therefore it's wise for them to go and have a discussion initially with their general practitioners and if the general practitioner realises that it's approaching the time when they need surgery or, or, or they're ready for it to then discuss it with a specialist. But it is just based on the level of pain and really how much it's interfering with their everyday life. It is major surgery and they need to be well aware of that. And with any of these large operations, there are always the, the general risks from anaesthetics and there are more specific risks related to having a joint replaced, such as getting an infection in it, getting a clot in it, permanent stiffness afterwards. But luckily, the instance of complications is very low. But you can't rule out the fact that from time to time, people will develop complications. You have to bear in mind that, that there are risks in not doing anything. Because if your knee gets so painful that you can't actually mobilise, you start to develop risks of sores, chest infections and clots, even if you're not having anything done. So you've got to balance those up. And if you get so unfit because you can't mobilise, you're not doing yourself any good at all. Well, they'll come into hospital and they'll expect to stay in hospital uh, usually for two or three nights. They'll have their surgery and then on the first evening, afternoon evening they probably won't do very much. They're getting over the anaesthetic side of things but the next day they'll be out of bed, they'll be mobilising with physiotherapy. Initially they'll probably get mobilised with a frame but within those two or three days that they're in hospital they'll be mobile on sticks and be able to go up and down stairs although they will need a certain amount of help from others when they first get home. But certainly it is major surgery, so they will have uh, the potential for a great deal of pain. Luckily, modern painkillers are very effective, and then it'll depend on what they need. And these days, a lot of patients have painkillers that are controlled by the patient themselves. Initially, the joint is both swollen and extremely stiff, as well as being painful when they try and stand on it. And one of the reasons that they do need quite a lot of pain relief initially is to allow them to actually mobilise. Because the quicker they can get it moving, the quicker they can get their weight going through it, the better it is for the joint actually. By the time they leave hospital, uh, on the second or third day after the operation, they will be independently mobile. They'll be able to walk around with two sticks and, as I say, will be able to go up and down stairs, get in and out of a car, possibly with a little bit of help. And then over the first fortnight, they'll get substantially more mobile, probably getting rid of one of those sticks in that time. TED stockings or TED socks are usually used. You do have to have the right shaped leg to fit the sock as well as the other way around. So they're not uh, for everybody. And actually, we did rely on them very strongly. But as time's gone by, we've got better anticoagulants. So they're probably less important but the majority of surgeons will ask their patients to wear them for the first anything between two and six weeks. The anticoagulants can be by injection or orally, and certainly the majority of my patients have them by mouth now. And we following a knee replacement, it's 14 days. The physiotherapy is paramount, first of all, in getting the patient going initially and teaching them the exercises while they are at home. They will need regular contact with a physiotherapist to make sure that they are progressing as they should and to introduce further exercises as time goes by and getting them back to full mobility, eventually concentrating on getting them back to a normal gait. The patients vary a lot from fit young people who just have an isolated joint problem to older people or maybe people with rheumatism with many joints involved. But most of the patients will have varying amount of physio for about six weeks. It depends quite what you call success. In terms of getting up and about and mobile again, um, you're looking at about almost 100%. The majority of patients are very happy with their knee replacements, although they're often surprised at how long it takes to get back to absolute full mobility and forgetting about it, which a lot of evidence showing that it takes a good year for people to fully recover following a joint replacement. There are still a proportion, particularly with knee replacements, who do get some continual aches and pains when they're very active on their knees, and a small percentage who, who will have a, a more constant ache even at rest. 
as a rule of thumb, short haul flights can generally be taken after six to eight weeks and long haul after about three months. And there are two reasons for this. The first is that you have got this increased risk of a clot uh, and there is a risk of the clot from flying as well. And if you put the risk from the operation and flying together, it starts to be quite substantial and that can be a serious complication. Well, it's very helpful if they have got access to a gym because they can get back to doing some gym activities at an early stage within two or three weeks of the operation. They can start getting on a static bike, start doing upper body work and other limb strengthening exercises. Getting back to golf and tennis and things is generally more than three months. Well, many of my patients certainly get back to skiing. In fact, some of them, the main reason we've done the knee replacement is so they can enjoy their skiing every winter. And uh, again, I certainly don't recommend it within three months following the operation, but I'm entirely happy with the, for them to ski and I have many very happy patients who ski every winter. There's a slight misconception with the longevity of these joint replacements because there's a conception that the knee ray wears out, but actually knee replacements don't wear out as such these days because the materials are very good. What happens is there's a debonding between the metal of the joint replacement and the patient's bone, which of course is a living substance. Ultimately that interface tends to break down, but the majority of knee replacements last over 20 years. And consequently, once you're into your sort of mid-60s, the chance of you needing another operation, another knee replacement, well, well less than 50%, in fact, quite unlikely. Essentially, with a knee replacement, you're replacing the bits that are worn. And therefore, if the knee is generally worn, it's worth having a full knee replacement to replace all of it. But very often, only one half or maybe just the kneecap is worn, in which case you'll do a partial knee replacement, replacing that worn bit and keeping your normal good bits that are still functioning well. And so the majority of knee surgeons will make an assessment of each individual patient and decide what's best in their case. Actually, no, not particularly. Knee replacements are incredibly robust and uh, they often worry about kneeling on them. But the truth is that if you kneel on a knee replacement, about 50% of people find it uncomfortable and don't like doing it. The other 50% are fine, but it doesn't do the knee replacement any harm. The other question people often ask about is swimming, as to whether the breaststroke is good for it or not. I certainly have no qualms about my patients undertaking any sort of swimming, because they really are very strong, these knee replacements now.